Today's Eye on County show is still in Western Kenya, Kakamega County. We will look at livestock keeping. Bullfighting is an entertainment activity in Western Kenya that has attracted much political support, a situation that has made it impossible to enforce the laws in animal welfare. Kakamega Senator Boni Kalwale is an avid supporter of bullfighting with his bulls winning the fights in several occasions. Dango enzi ya mababu zetu huwa wanaanzisha mwaka kutumia hii miyareka ya bullfighting. Tumefanya leo wa subui, watu wamekua wengi, tumefraia sana, sasa vile mchezo imeenda inaonyesha kwamba mwaka itakuwa mzuri. It is believed that bulls involved in fighting in Kakamega are fed with herbs and bang to reduce their sexual libido and endure tremendous amounts of distress. There is also one person dedicated to singing and talking to the animals on the eve of the games. The conversation about animal rights has emerged in the veterinary field both locally and globally following studies that have linked animal productivity which translates to food security and poverty elevation in communities. The law that criminalizes mistreatment of animals has been in existence since the 1950s as quoted in the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act, Cap 360. However, the only punishment which is in that very law and which was set in 1984 stipulates a fine of 3,000 shillings or six months in jail for offenders and has never been changed ever since. Yes, bullfighting is good, yes, which is coming in as a social aspect of it. But the question of it is how will people will be watching and the fighting when they are hungry? We must address the issue of, of food security. So that even as we watch, if you have ever watched, personally I've watched and I'll tell you that you need energy. You actually need to have eaten in the morning and you must be assured that even after that watching of the food fight, you must also be assured of the food on the table in the evening. So you can't start your food security program with a bullfighting. It must just be one of the things that will come after you have addressed the major food security components. But it can't be a focus uh, to a serious food security program. Mm -hmm. But I can also assure you that it's an issue that we are also looking at it critically uh, uh, under social services. You will realize that we have given it a serious focus in the Ministry of Social, uh, Culture and Social Services, which is being embraced as a county, uh, but not directly as a strategy of food security. I don't promote bullfighting because of uh, animal welfare issues. Actually, I just don't know how to come in as a person because it's not right. Mm -hmm. You know, one, you need consent. You know, you're not really talking to the bull like, do you want to, to go for the fight? Dairy farming in Kakamega dates back in 1966 when the local dairy cooperative was registered. Since then, the number of cooperatives have increased and currently there are 23 active cooperatives with a combined share capital of 11,476,679 shillings. The county government of Kakamega has invested heavily on various dairy projects in an effort of making Kakamega the next frontier for economic growth in the dairy sector. Being a community that is known for their love for tea, almost all farmers own at least two dairy cows and a goat to provide the household with milk. Dr. Kelly Auma Nelima is the chief officer in charge of livestock production, veterinary service and fisheries development. She tells us about livestock keeping in Kakamega County. We are giving uh, farmers improved uh, uh, improved dairy animals sourced from outside the county. This is also majorly to improve the county uh, dairy herd genetics to improve productivity. So one cow and AI are actually aimed at improving the genetics in Kakamega. 
This is actually also run on a subsidy basis, cost sharing. The farmer pays for the services and transport and the county takes care of the AI material, the semen, the liquid nitrogen. Close to 70% of the dairy cattle genetics is made up of the local Zebu breed. Around 70% of the capital population in Kakamega is made up of the, indigen the indigenous uh, Zebu, which are very low in uh, productivity. And uh, this is just aimed at uh, improving what is already there. AI can be used on all animals. They are breeds that are friendly to all sizes of animals, including the Zebu. So when you cross ones, you have 50% uh, local and 50% improved and you move on until you'll have something close to around 75-80%. So it is actually easier to improve what we already have in the county. Dairy cattle is one of the farming ventures that is widely practiced in Kakamega County. At least each household can proudly boast of having between two to four dairy cattle. Others have bulls, which normally serve a tourist attraction when it comes to the bullfighting ceremony. Tobias Kahonga is a mixed farmer. He mainly grows crops such as sugarcane and maize. He is also a renowned dairy farmer who has been practicing his dairy venture since 2004. Currently, I have three and uh, I think they are crossbreeds of Freshan and Asha. Uh, and all of them are female, two are heifers, and one is the mother. And have been going on well, only that the market, the milk market has gone down um, due to failure of mere sugar. Now very many people have come in, they are practicing also animal farming, but on the side of indigenous, not these exotic breeds. Tobias started his farming venture with one Frisian cow, which he says he bought at 20,000 Kenyan shillings. It was doing well. Its production was at around 10 liters in the morning, around 8 liters in the evening, totaling to 18 liters in a day. So, we moved on well with the time and it gave us about uh, eight calves. Uh, the one we started with, it is the original mother of these ones mm, that we are having now. Uh, I only bought one and I've sold about ten. And I'm now remaining with three. After his flock increased to 11 freshens, Tobias ended up selling eight of his cows due to lack of market for his milk. We were producing milk and we had, we had nowhere to sell. That's why we decided to reduce the number of animals because the expense was high and the income was low. Most dairy farmers in Kakamega feed their cattle on dry matter, especially the remains gotten from maize is harvested. We normally feed them on dry matter. That's the remains of maize. We do crush them. Uh, the cops and the stems, we crush them and st uh, stock them and we use them during dry season. And when the rain starts, we use the green pastures like napier and these are the indigenous grass. This giant ceteria, one of also the fodders we propagate in our farm. Ronald Abonyo is another dairy farmer who mainly specializes in growing fodder for subsistence use as well as for sale. In 2019, his farm was involved in a fire accident which killed close to 900 poultry birds and four dairy cattle. This is Kala and Bracaria farm. We do a quality fodder as well as uh, poultry and uh, dairy farming. We have about 12 animals. We had 12 animals and uh, they are heavy feeders. By most of them were freshers because we only had three ashes and they will be able to eat the grass, but we had 860 bales extra at the end of the last season. 
and also we used to sell some. We have sold uh, Bracaria to places like uh, Eldoret, we have sold it to Nakuru, uh, some farmers from uh, Busia have also bought them. That is Bracaria hay. In January, Bracaria hay was going at um, 450 a bale. As uh, Bomba Road was going for 300, we used to sell Bracaria at 450. I want to say that uh, this is a business that uh, we can venture in and at least make a lot of profits. Yeah, we, we have Napier. The Napier we have here can be fed to sheep, uh, cows of any kind, be they dairy or beef cattle. Bracaria can even be fed on the, uh, the, the same animals, that is beef, cattle, dairy cattle, sheep, goats. It can also be fed on uh, pigs and even poultry. With the pigs, we need to make silage out of the Bracaria. Because of the high nutrition value it has, then it can be fed to the pigs. With the poultry, we only need to cut it when it is still so soft, so that it can easily be digested by the uh, poultry. Yeah, and even we, we, wherever we grow it, whenever we cut, we have some farmers uh, around here who live, who do free-range uh, poultry. You will find they like that grass very much, so they go picking it wherever it starts sprouting. Ronald mainly grows six types of fodder on his three-acre farm. They include giant king grass, napier grass, different types of brachyria grass, desmodium, caliandra, sesbassian seban, and lucerne. Here where we are, we have napier grass, one of the improved napier grass that we are doing in the farm, and this is called uh, giant king grass napier. Uh, if you observe very well inside here, between the the lines of uh, the giant king grass napier, we have intercropped it with the uh, fodder vines. And the, the fodder vines we are doing here are uh, <coughs> majorly dual purpose, so they can give us the vines themselves for our, our meals. The fodder from them will go for our dairy cows. Uh, so Lucerne, Desmodium, Caliandra are legumes, so they are prote proteinous. With the Lucerne, uh, we just harvest it and you can even make hay from Lusan. Uh, Bracaria we also do mostly hay. Uh, the goodness with the Bracaria it can also be used to make uh, uh, silage. You can do silage, you can do hay and even Bracaria can be grown for uh, as pasture so that the animals graze directly in the field where we have quality for. With the Bracaria you can plant the seeds in the nursery then uh, after about uh, four weeks or five weeks, you transplant them. And also, we can approach the a split. A split is, for example, this one here is a split. This is a split of Bracaria. This is enough to plant uh, in one hole. So this split, at the end of the day, maybe after two months, it will be like this, this one here. For example, this one we planted here, we just did it two months ago, and um, uh, it was during the dry spell, but now, just one month from here, we shall be harvesting it. So after the first cutting, uh, with the Bracaria, you can cut also after every two months. You can be cutting it after every two months, and it's very nutritious, and also does very well. Even in areas where it, uh, the, the fertilization is poor, Bracaria will do well. Sasabani uh, Sasabani is also good for fodder and the farmers are advised to add it to the fodder they plant so that um, when they harvest also they harvest with Sasabani Sasabani. It can be done in the, any other crop so long as um, you, you space them properly uh, so that they are not overcrowded because when they are overcrowded the other plants down there will not be able to do well but here we have done it even in maize and it's doing very well uh, as far as the uh, harvest is concerned. Yeah. Now here we have the smodium. Uh, we have done push and pull with the maize. Uh, in between the lines we have the smodium. Then to the sides we have uh, uh, maize. And uh, this maize will do very well. It will very, do very well because the, the smodium will be fixing nitrates and then the maize will be using it. Still, the desmodium will be harvested for our animals. So we are getting the desmodium for our animals. We also have maize for ourselves. 
and therefore uh, it benefits us a lot. Both Desmodium, Caliandra and uh, Lucerne are legumes and therefore they give proteins to the animals. Then we have also the uh, giant king grass, uh, Napier and Bracaria as grasses. Bracaria can do up to, it is said uh, with the research it has done up to 20% uh, CP, protein, protein content. Uh, but here in Kenya we have seen a research where they are doing up to 18%. So as compared to Napier, which is uh, the local Napiers, which do up to 8% protein content, when they have uh, been cut at one meter, you will find that then Bracaria is uh, more better than uh, the Napiers we use. The giant king grass Napier that we are using, uh, we are told can do up to 18% uh, or 14% CP. And therefore it is also good for as far as our animals are concerned.